Friends, you never know who you'll touch in life. You never know how or when you'll have an impact or how important your example can be to someone else. My faith helps me understand that circumstances don't dictate my happiness or my inner peace. The chances you take, the people you meet, the people you love, the faith that you have, that's what's going to define you. You have to be who you are in this world, no matter what. At the end of the day, my friends, it's not about what you have or even what you've accomplished. It's about what you've done with those accomplishments. It's about who have you lifted up? Who have you made better? It's about what you've given back to those people. I think, personally, a role model is a mentor, someone who you see on a daily basis and you learn from them. My faith taught me how to forgive. Faith taught me when people present themselves in a certain way, there's probably some backstory or issue or reason for the way that they are acting. It's not you, my friends. It's them. And a lot of times, it's about something that's completely out of their control. Put God first. I've been protected. I've been directed. I've been corrected. <clears throat> I've kept God in my life, and it's kept me humble. I didn't always stick with Him, but He always stuck with me. Don't be afraid to think outside the box. Don't be afraid to fail big to dream big, but remember, dreams without goals are just dreams, and they ultimately fuel disappointment. And understand, to achieve these goals, you must apply discipline and consistency. You'll never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. It's not how much you have in life. It's about what you do with what you have. It That's where the success is in helping others. Say thank you in advance for what's already yours. That's how I live my life. True desire in the heart for anything good is God's proof to you sent beforehand to indicate that it's yours already. My advice is this, and it's simple. Don't just aspire to make a living. Friends, aspire to make a difference. And may God bless each and every one of you, and take good care. Bye-bye now. Good morning. My name is Ralph Friedrichs. I am an addiction recovery coach, a life coach, an author, and the host of this show, to Take Your Life Back Today radio show. You can see a video version of this if you go to YouTube under channel Take Your Life Back Today show. Courage, my friends. This early morning, how much courage do you owe? How much do you own? It's interesting that after God created Adam, he said, you need a help mate. You need someone who's going to link arms with you and help you move forward. That tells me that we were never intended to stand alone or to be isolated, that we should be have the courage to have someone by our side. The scripture also says that two are better than one, because when one falls, the other one is there to pick up. That's in Ecclesians 4, 9 through 10. That's why the enemy tries to take away the support and encouragement that we all were designed to receive from one another, and we can't let that happen during the isolation of this pandemic. Impart courage. Too often we don't take the power of encouragement as seriously as we should. The scripture also says, but encourage one another daily as long as it's called today so that none of you may be hardened by the sins of deceitfulness, in Hebrews 3.13. To encourage, my friends, means to impart courage, to make fearless, to make brave. God is saying that when you have people around you who take their defensive stand with you and encourage you, you will rise up and defeat the enemy together. Together you will defeat that enemy, but the enemy constantly works to isolate us, deceive us, and to d discourage us. He wants to take our courage and subtract from what God is doing in our lives. I've seen people get so down and discouraged that they can't even think straight, let alone stand against the enemy that they face. You know, the, those times when the enemy has gotten in and is having a heyday in your mind is when 
you need that courage. She tells you that you're not good enough. You can't do it. You'll never get well. And you may as well quit trying. But God wants us to show up strong with encouragement for other people like Moses did for the people of Israel. Having told uh, Paroah to free God's people from slavery, Moses showed up the isolate elders the miracle signs that God would do. Yet when Paroah initially resisted, the people of Israel did not listen to Moses because of their discouragement and harsh labors in Exodus 6, 9. They were so buried under years of discouragement that they could not even hear about God of the impossible. Nevertheless, God used Moses to restore hope to his people and to bring them out into freedom. So, how different would this world look if we all encouraged someone daily, just one more person? How strong would it be with our arms linked together in defense? It might be a simple word of encouragement to your spouse, maybe to your child or to a co-worker, to a neighbor, to a friend. Ask God to give you someone today to encourage in a meaningful way. Your positive words can bring light into dark situations and refresh spirits to withstand the storms of life. And it starts today. Call me at 844 Help together. We can help each other. Take our lives back. Be good to yourselves and always be good to each other. A smile to that neighbor while you're encouraging that neighbor can change their day and change their life. It can make a difference in your life. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only son. How many of you parents and grandparents will give up your your grandson or son for the sake of humanity? Well, not many. But guess what? If any, not many at all. God did it for us. God gave us his son so that we can have everlasting life. Folks, start today believing that God truly loves you. Take good care. Bye-bye.